I'd like to welcome Jackie Reeder. Jackie um, is a GISP. You can see that right there. That's a GIS professional. Uh, and her presentation today is getting started, as you can see, getting started with Esri's Experience Builder Developer Edition. She's with ITS, and I'm happy that she agreed to do this first presentation for 2024. Welcome, Jackie, and the floor is yours. Thank you, um, and thank you everyone for attending. As Keith mentioned, my name is Jackie Reeder, and today I'll be talking about Esri's Experience Builder Developer Edition. Uh, now, I thought this would be a useful topic to share because I certainly don't consider myself a developer, and the online documentation didn't really look straightforward to me. Uh, the developer edition always seemed to be really useful, but also really complex and kind of intimidating. So I'm really excited to share how I got started step by step and share what I learned along the way so that others who are wanting more flexibility to customize your experiences without a ton of coding, um, you can get going too. So there will be several useful URLs on my slides. So I have prepared a PDF of my slides. If you're interested, I'm happy to share those with you. Um, and as Keith mentioned, um, he's also going to be including those in the description of the recording when the video posts. So don't worry about jotting them down during the presentation. So the first thing that we'll talk briefly about is why use Developer Edition over the out-of-the-box online application. Next, we'll go through each step of the installation and setup process, including downloading the appropriate version of Node.js, downloading the Experience Builder files, creating login credentials using a client ID, installing the necessary modules, and then actually accessing the developer edition. After that, I'll give a high-level overview of adding custom widgets and give you a short demonstration of how to add a custom widget to your experience. Then we'll get into publishing and downloading the experience, where to put it on your web server, and then how to access it online. So the developer edition of Experience Builder looks identical to the out-of-the-box application available through ArcGIS Online or Portal. And it has the same themes and widgets, but Say you want to customize the look and feel of your tables, or you want users to be able to filter data and have your experience update accordingly. That's when it's a good time to look at the Developer Edition. Another nice thing about Developer Edition is that your experiences live on a web server, so you can give out a speakable and easy to remember URL, like webserver.com slash experience rather than sharing a link with the entire ArcGIS Online item number in it. Now, the customization in Developer Edition uses components of JavaScript. So to develop your own custom widgets, you'll need a basic understanding of TypeScript, React, JSX, and Gmu. And I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing those right because I am not a developer. Uh, thankfully, though, there are a lot of really generous developers who have already done the hard work and have shared their code for custom widgets online. And I'll give you some resources on where you can find those towards the end of the presentation. Now, before you get started downloading Developer Edition, uh, you will need admin privileges. So plan accordingly if your organization has security practices in place that will prevent you from installing programs on your PC. So for the installation, we're going to primarily be following the instructions in the documentation at the URL on this slide, just with some added clarification. And the installation includes a server side and a client side installation. And for the server side, you can use the developer site or an existing portal. So for this demonstration, we'll be using an ArcGIS online portal. The first thing the instructions are going to tell you to do is install Node.js. And they'll include a link to the site to download that. Uh, however, if you download the latest release, you'll end up having to undo your progress later on down the road. Uh, that's a lesson that I learned the hard way. Uh, the link from the documentation takes you to the current release, which is version 21. Um, however, the latest developer edition requires version 16. So you'll need to go to the previous releases and find version 16. 
Now, that site is not the most straightforward. Um, so I've added a link to uh, version 16's download page um, on this slide. And then even that page has a lot of download options with not a lot of description to them. So if you're running Windows, um, you'll select the node-v16.20.2-x64.msi uh, file that I have highlighted on the screen. And you'll download that and install it. Next, you'll need to download the Experience Builder files. Uh, those are located at the URL on this slide. And you'll unzip them to your local drive. And you'll want to be sure to make note of where you save these files. Uh, we're going to be using those, the path to those in an upcoming step. The next step is creating the credentials to log in to Developer Edition using your existing portal credentials. Again, for this demonstration, we're using ArcGIS Online. So once you log into ArcGIS Online, you'll go to your content, create a new item, select Application, then Other Application. You'll enter a meaningful title. Uh, I have a suggestion on here to name it Experience Builder Credentials, but whatever makes sense to you. Um, then you'll add any applicable tags, categories, and summary you'd like, and then save. Once you save that item, the item description page will load, and you'll scroll to the gear icon that says Manage. And then uh, what you see at the bottom of this slide is what pops up there. You're going to click Add to the redirect URLs and add the local host port 3001 as a redirect URL. And then right above that, uh, where it has the client ID, you'll go ahead and copy that. You'll then open a command prompt, run as administrator, and remember making note of where you saved those unzipped experience builder files. You'll change the command prompt directory to that location and then to the server folder nested within it. Then you'll run the command npm space ci. And it'll take a moment to install. It's just adding the required Node.js modules. And once it's finished, you'll enter the command npm space start. And you only need to run the npm ci command during the initial installation or if you change the version of Node.js. Um, and that would really just be if you're upgrading your version of Developer Edition. But primarily, when you come back to work on your experiences in the future, you'll only need to run the npm start command. The next thing you'll do is open another command prompt window, run as administrator. And this time, you'll change the directory to the location of your experience builder files and then the client folder nested within it. And then you'll again run the npm ci command to install the necessary modules and then npm start. And again, you only have to run the npm ci command on the initial install or with a change of the version of Node.js. Uh, just use npm start when using developer edition going forward. So back to your browser, you'll navigate to localhost port uh, 3001. And in a previous step, we set this URL to redirect when we created that credentials application. So type in your portal site URL and then paste in your client ID from the credentials application and click sign in. Once you log in, you'll see all the experiences that you've created in Developer Edition. You can edit those or create a new one, and the layout looks exactly the same as the online version of Experience Builder. All the templates and themes are the same too. And once you've created an experience, you can connect to any data that's available to you through the online version. So in this example on this slide, you can see I've connected to lo uh, location points that are published to the same ArcGIS online site where I created the credentials app. So custom widgets are one of the main reasons to use Developer Edition. I'm going to demonstrate how to use a custom widget that's been shared online in a moment. Uh, but there's a couple of resources on this slide that include repositories of already developed and shared custom widgets. You can use these to get started if you're not up for developing your own from scratch. And once you create a custom widget, it's available on the left-hand pane of your experience builder, just like any other component that you drag and drop into your experience. 
Now you can add your custom widget to a single experience and deploy it that way. Um, or if your organization could benefit from reusing a custom widget, you can deploy just the widget to your portal environment for use in other experience builder applications. So the bones of the custom widgets are stored in the client folder nested within your experience builder files. Uh, custom widgets use a specific folder structure with specific file names for the developer edition to read them. So these primarily consist of a JSON config file, a manifest file, and a source folder with two subfolders nested under it. A runtime folder containing the meat and potatoes TypeScript file for the widget, and a settings folder containing a TypeScript file with the widget settings. Now, the video playing on the screen now is going to demonstrate how to use a custom widget from start to finish. In a previous slide, I shared some resources for already written code for custom widgets. And this custom print widget here comes from an Esri community shared in one of those links. So the first thing I did was download the print widget zip file, and then I'll unzip it and save it in my experience builder files under client, your dash extensions, and then widgets. So this is just the um, location here. I'll let the video catch up. And then once it's, it's extracted, um, I'll go back to my file explorer here and just show you what that folder looks like. So you can see the print, widget, the print folder and then that config file, the manifest file, and the source folder. So now I'm going to launch my Experience Builder Developer Edition. So I'll open a command prompt, run as administrator. And then I'll go back to my file explorer and copy the path of that client folder. And then I'm going to change the directory to that path um, in the command prompt window. Now, I've already installed uh, the NPM modules using NPM CI. So I'm just going to give the command NPM start. And I'm going to do this again for the server folder. So starting with opening another command prompt window, run as administrator. I'm going to change the directory to the same path, but instead of the client folder, I'm going to put server. And then run the command npm start. Next, I'll go to my browser, and I'm going to navigate to my local host, port 3001. And you can see that my initial layout looks just like it does online. You can see the experiences that I've created here, but we're going to create a new one for this demonstration. And we'll choose a blank scrolling template. And I'm going to add a map just to have some data to work with uh, for the demonstration. And when I go to add new data, you can see all of my ArcGIS Online Hub data is available to choose from, since that's the portal I used when creating my credentials app. And on the left side, I have all my available widgets uh, the out-of-the-box ones are the same as the ones online. Um, but if we scroll to the very bottom, you can see our custom widgets. Um, the print widget file uh, that I downloaded included a little icon. So that's why that one looks a little prettier than one of the others down there. Um, then I'll connect that to um, our map. And it doesn't look the prettiest, but um, I just wanted to quickly demonstrate how this works. So I'm going to save it and publish it, and then we'll preview this to make sure our print widget works as expected. So I'm going to uh, try to download a landscape uh, JPEG here. And this particular print widget has um, some advanced options um, that are pretty cool, but I'm going to just accept the defaults and hit print. And then under, that, uh, under the printed files, um, it's taking just a moment to load. You can see the thinking circle there, but we'll give it a minute. And the file's ready to go. We'll open it up, and there is a successful JPEG file from our custom print widget. So once the custom widget is developed, that's really all it takes to deploy it. 
Now, back to our experience builder deployment. Um, once you've configured your experience to your liking, make sure to save it and publish it. You're not going to be able to download it if it's not published. And once it's published, it's saved to your local drive. So uh, you'll need to download the experience by clicking the three dots next to the preview icon. And also keep in mind, the developer edition experience is saved on your PC's local drive. So if you make changes to the experience um, after you've deployed it, uh, it's not going to be reflected online. Um, so you'll need to re-download the experience and overwrite the file on your web server. And sharing is also controlled in the experience builder. So make sure it's shared appropriately before moving on to putting it on your web server. So it'll download as a zip file and you'll unzip that and copy it to a web server. Now, if you have ArcGIS Enterprise, this can be the web server where your web adapters are already installed, uh, but that does, it doesn't have to be that. It can be any web server of your choosing. In this case, I just pasted the unzipped folder into my www root folder on my web server. And as a side note about scalability, um, a good reason for choosing to host your experience on ArcGIS Online is if you're anticipating a lot of heavy traffic on it because ArcGIS Online can scale on the fly. So is hosting it on your web server going to impact performance? Uh, the short answer is probably not. The data you're pulling in is still hosted in ArcGIS Online in, this, in our case. Um, the experience is mainly just appearance and styling files, so you're still relying on ArcGIS Online to do the heavy lifting. Now, this would be a different story if you're using your enterprise portal, but if you're concerned about performance, I'd recommend just talking to your IT department or your ESRI rep. And that's about it. Uh, once it's copied to your web server, you can access it by using the web server name slash the folder name of your experience. Um, it'll require a login if it wasn't shared publicly, like uh, the case on the uh, current slide. But now you can give out the URL of your very first developer edition experience. And that's all I have for now. Uh, I hope installing and using developer edition doesn't seem as daunting as it might have before. Uh, please feel free to take down my contact information, get in touch with any questions, or if you'd like a copy of my slide deck. Uh, if there's any questions now, I'm happy to answer them in the time remaining.